send and fix the cross will be in our worship with the Thanksgiving for that passage. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Join in Christ in the waters of baptism. We are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, with our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean. Quench our thirst and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all our sufferings. Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought dries the earth bring refreshment, where despair prevails, grant hope, where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen.
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and common life, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together 
and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, Christ did not return abuse. When he suffered, Christ did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that having died to sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel application. <laughs> Oh, 
truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for the shepherd, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run away because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. back with you, and I'm grateful for all of you who kept the faith and uh, kept the church going, although I know you've had plenty of experience with that, and I'm especially uh, grateful to Pastor Stilski, who was kind enough to lead the service. At about the time you were worshiping here, I was in Monte Carlo, a place I never imagined I would ever be. I have asked you to be open to God's will, of uh, God's abundance and his surprise, but learning that some friends had brought, bought a little apartment a few miles from the French Riviera was really quite a surprise, especially when they were gracious enough to invite us to stay there before they came for the summer. So I wondered what I would say to you on Good Shepherd Sunday as I was leaving, and I didn't expect that I would be talking about Monaco, the world's second smallest nation, a principality known mostly as a place to gamble and race cars, and that also happens to be a wonderful tax haven for the super wealthy. And that's convenient since about 30% of the people of Monte Carlo are millionaires or billionaires. Let that sink in. Our reading from John's Gospel is comforting, like all our readings today. Acts on the growth of the early church, the 23rd Psalm, and the letter from Peter that tells us how Jesus navigated the injustices of a world that Monaco encapsulates when you look below the glitzy surface. A world where wealth is abundant for a quarter of the population who happen to be citizens of the country and pay no taxes, but that seems to care a little less for the people beyond its borders, or even that three-quarters of the population who weren't so lucky to be born there and only have the country's secretive Swiss-style banking system to guarantee their continued wealth. We love the passages about the Good Shepherd in John that portray Jesus as the door to the abundant lives we live in Christ. And like the other readings, we often use it on wall plaques or read it for funerals, but there's something about this passage that seems to elude us. It sounds something like a parable, but midway through, the writer tells us that Jesus used a figure of speech that they did not understand. We spend a part of each Sunday trying to understand Jesus a little better. And we have seen how that much of the time his disciples didn't understand him. But John doesn't record the parables of Jesus like Matthew, Mark, and Luke did. His gospel is more expansive. It invites us into things that go beyond our comprehension, just as Jesus' teaching often eluded his disciples. John helps us to open our minds to things that are bigger than things around us, like grapevines or mustard seeds. 
And this is one of those places where Jesus and John are inviting us into something larger, more expansive. Jesus tells us that he is the gate or the door for the sheep, and that those who come into the fold by him will find salvation and pasture. He leads them to be fed and promises them that they will have life in him and have it more abundantly. I certainly saw abundance last Sunday, four-story yachts in the harbor, a small city being prepared for a Formula One car race, through city streets that can have you white-knuckling in second gear. The casino is the focal point, and there are stories of gamblers leaving it with millions at midnight in their pockets and walking to the train station unmolested. But there are even more stories of the men and women who lost their villas and their fortunes at the Baccarat tables. Very James Bond. Now, the usual sermon on Good Shepherd Sunday tries to explain sheep production to you. And I can say that my father's first job was as a shepherd when there were still large swaths of the upper grade plains that didn't have fences. It was a kind of a high school job, or one you would have as a kid. But this passage is about more than sheep farming. We tend to think of these shepherds as people on the lowest rungs of society in Jesus' time. Devious sheep rustlers. And they still were in my father's time, I can assure you. But the rulers of Rome liked to portray themselves as shepherds as well. Shepherds of those millions of people they ruled. And when you turn from the seacoast of Monaco and look to the Alps as they slope down to the Mediterranean, you can see one of those dangerous highways that still crisscross this odd little country. Napoleon built it on the path that Roman soldiers walked as they went north from Rome to conquer Europe. And you begin to see the links to the world that Jesus knew, where power was usually absolute, where rulers gained their fame and wealth on the backs of people who labored to serve them. The emperors and Caesars of Jesus' time called themselves shepherds to show their devotion to those people that the wealthy exploited and often abused. You can see that tradition of portraying the Grimaldi family as these same sorts of shepherds to the people of Monaco today. Everything from roads and bridges to libraries and schools carry the names of Prince Rainier and Princess Grace and Albert, the current prince, and his sisters. It can get confusing. You can even see Albert's throne in the palace, although I can't imagine he ever sits in it. His main job is to keep that family name out front. It is that same sort of branding that the Caesars used in Jesus' time. But the wealth of Monaco is not shared with everyone. We enjoy the privilege of charging our little electric car on the street for free, but the real wealth is reserved for a very closed community, one whose gate is closed. It doesn't admit strangers unless they bring a certain cachet and a lot of money to Monaco with them. It is abundant life, to be sure. But the highest expression of that abundance is drinking champagne on the deck of your yacht. Uh, and as usual, it's always a little bit disappointing to see that the rich aren't very creative. The abundant life Jesus promises is eternal. A life more lasting than a family's claim to power, the splendor of a city on a beautiful seacoast, or the fabulous wealth that some manage to accumulate. John's Gospel testifies to Jesus' incarnation, his ability to speak to us as one of us, to know the need for an abundance in our relationship with him, and to offer a glimpse of that promise of something more. He will lead them in and out of the fold, and they will find pasture. We are promised that we will be fed with things to sustain us. Jesus tells us that the sheep did not hear the voice of those thieves and bandits that had come before him, and did not listen to them. 
It is a beautiful way of saying that we are chosen, invited to follow, and be fed by the Good Shepherd who cares for us, who does not reward our service to him for a tax break or even that free electricity for tourist cars. My point is not to make fun of the Grimaldis, although it is easy, and their tiny magic kingdom, but to stress that this abundance life we have in Jesus is given freely by a Savior who gave himself to die for us, that we can enjoy a relationship with him that gives us the comfort of today's song, that takes a pause to give thanks for the growth of the young Christian community in Acts, and offers us a lesson in how we should respond to the injustices around us in Peter's epistle. It is a relationship that encourages our growth as God's servants, empowers us to greater service, being comforted when we find ourselves in real need. The reading from John testifies to the richness, the fullness of that relationship we're invited into when we hear that call from the shepherd. You may recall a few weeks ago, we read about Jesus healing a man who was blind from birth. That passage comes directly before this one, and you can see how the reading continues that account. I said that John takes us to new ways of thinking about the promises we have, and the talk of doors and gates and sheep and shepherds and knowing his voice are worth pondering. But if we reread the verses above this passage, we see that the blind man we heard a few weeks ago was not just some character from a parable. He was a real living person who had never been able to participate in the community as he probably hoped. To be welcomed into the fold until that shepherd Jesus calls him and he hears that shepherd's voice when he receives the surprising and abundant gift of joining that community around him. And because, not because of some accident of birth, not because he was rich, because he was born to the right people at the right place or the right time, but because he had been called and heard that call, and most importantly, he believed. Our Good Shepherd will lead us to those green pastures to be fed until one day we will leave them to be in that promise and live in the promise of the abundance of his kingdom. It was a treat to see Monte Carlo in all its eccentricities, but it is much better to be in this community of saints who live and trust and believe in promises more certain than tax breaks. How much better to put our hopes on a shepherd who promises us abundant eternal life, and how much better to be one of those sheep who are led in and out by our shepherd each day, so that we receive the nourishment we need to sustain us, not only in this world, but in that kingdom that Jesus came to prepare for us. So many of our old gospel songs sing of pearly gates and streets paved with gold, but the real abundance of life in Christ is that call that asks us to be one of his, that daily walk we have when he sees that we are fed, and sees that we are protected until the end of the day. Jesus' teachings are full of paradox, of things combined that shouldn't go together, and here the abundance we gain is the product of serving others. And when we do, Christ's kingdom is already among us as we walk daily with him. Amen.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You are the shepherd who gathers us in your mighty and loving arms. Help your church to listen for your voice, especially when the voices of sin, idolatry, and oppression threaten to overpower us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The green pastures, still waters, the dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where there is desolate, desolation, bring abundance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim shepherding love, comfort, and protection of all people and of all creation. Direct leaders in our time to learn from your example and instruction. Give them servant hearts that they generously seek the good of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You journey with us wherever our paths may lead. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety or depression or suffering in any way especially Brian, Dennis, Ty, Dick, Jenny, Aaron, Melissa, Rich, and Cindy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You are the sheep gate that gives safety to your beloved flocks. Provide protection for refugees, victims of domestic violence, those who are imprisoned, and all people who are vulnerable to violence and mistreatment. We pray especially for the people of our Savior's Lutheran Church, whose church was recently vandalized by the Proud Boys because of their belief that all people are invited to share in God's kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You call your sheep by name and lead them through the valley of death. We give you thanks for those who have died and now dwell in your house forever. Be with those who mourn and give them hope in the promise of resurrection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's <coughs> resurrection, we lift our prayers in praise to you, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth, and the breaking of this bread reveal to us the risen one. And the pouring of this wine pour us out in service to the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in new creations. 